So welcome back everyone to another round of Plant Nomads. First things first, we have a new update, which gives us a very nice performance improvement by reducing the time it takes to load your inventories when you use a large connected inventory and production type system. So as you can see here, what we now have is the container that you open because you know, if you go to refinery or something like that, it's just gonna show its inventory and not the connected ones. In terms of the storage uh, containers, you're gonna see just the initial one and then you can go to individual ones to open them up or you can go and click the button and then experience a similar type lag but it doesn't freeze up the whole thing. Uh, I can still move my cursor and everything during that time. Uh, so it actually does do a very nice overall improvement on everything. Uh, but you know, if you're used to having that full amount, you're not gonna see that showing immediately. What this means now is better performance, of course, when using large connected systems. But also second thing is, it's probably gonna be really good practice to start giving better names to storages, right? like my deuterium drop box here so when you're looking for a certain one and you're not just looking for what's in it you can go there and say hey that is you know uh deuterium drop box number two or whatever it, it again with large systems like this you're gonna see a lot of stuff in there and you're not it's not gonna help that much in terms of the naming but at least it will help with the performance there and the other thing we're doing today is looking at the very aptly named very simply named scout to all biomes yes that is the name the name is the description of what it is. Instead of it being called the, you know, Vulture or something like that, it's just the Scout to All Volumes. And it has some very interesting features. First off being that it has small air blades for flight as well as wheels. Now this will be made clear if you're not sure why I have both once we get it out and take it for a spin. Now the design itself during flight has a little bit of a wobble that I'm seeing. It's kind of wobbling side to side, so it doesn't have exactly the best balance. But the air blades are hot keyed, and it's not in the description of the workshop. These are hot keyed to one, and so you can turn them on and off. And you see, I got a nice bit of mobility from the driving. So if we look at it from just a power standpoint, I am getting 12% there. Let's turn. So 100% from one side of solar panels and I'm actually charging my batteries. I'm producing more than it takes for me to drive around. However, if I was to turn on the air blades, just the air blades hovering, I'm now draining. And I have 56 minutes, just normal flight time sitting here, going up, not a problem, other than the wobbly nature. Once I start going forward, we get a greater drop to my longevity of power but again i'm also getting power right now from two solar panels it's just not enough to charge the batteries and fly but when you're driving with the air blades turned off you're actually producing enough just from two solar panels at 100 to recharge the batteries now one obvious advantage is the fact that you can easily transition as you come in especially on flatter terrain like i just did there and I was able to turn it off, drop down, and keep going. Now, turning, again, I'm getting a surplus of energy just from two solar panels. So I'm actually recharging. So this is a very good long-term scout in that you're not going to run out of power and be stuck somewhere without the ability to produce uh, new fuel sources. One disadvantage, though, is as you see, I've got the thermoregulator off. I turn it on, and just sitting here, with the air blades off, I'm losing power. So it's not producing enough for uh, from the solar panels for me to keep going. However, the fortunate thing is it does have a small deuterium generator, which is automatically off anyway. But if I turn that on, it's not only producing power for everything, it's also recharging the batteries. So you can use that as not so much a normal powering type thing i would say but focus on it being more of an emergency thing throw some deuterium in and when you really need power because solar's not cutting it turn it on and you're good to go in addition to being able to go on ground and in the air uh it does have several connected storage containers which uh you know they're named uh, i think that's russian or uh, something similar we do have a conveyor connector on the front so you can tie it into a small production site or when you come back to your base, 
park it and have it tie into the storage on your base for using it as you know resources for production there uh there are some gaps here in between as you can see where one conveyor piece is used because you only need one i would probably add a a an item dispenser in one of these most likely this one so it's more towards the middle of the vehicle that way you'd have access to any resources on board without having to specifically go and take them out that means if you go on site you're like oh i'm digging around i found me a nice little spot i want to build a little beacon here easy to do right next to this no problem so this has a really good top speed during flying of around 50 kilometers an hour between 50 and 50.2 and good mobility on wheels uh the problem i see is with the turning and at times you see that just lifting up it has that wobble to the side uh, it doesn't have quite that balance in the middle that it really needs. It also has a good bit of a kick to the front. Uh, so I really see this being an issue with it flipping at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make an adjustment on this. So what I've done now is I added the item dispenser, as I said, I probably would. And to compensate for the weird balancing between the left and right, I have added an additional armor block on each spot. So the air blades, for example, were here connected straight to the containers themselves. I've added simply a single armor block on each one. And thanks to that, I now have a little bit wider set to the air blades. And that should give me enough balance for everything to fly correctly oh yeah so much better that is definitely better it doesn't feel like it's about to flip over now so a simple fix just throw an armor block between the containers and the air blades you'll be fine all i did was take uh, a few armor blocks i actually did have to stack too high to make it work but i basically put one two like that and then placed using the mover tool the air blades one by one on the top block and put the block in there where I want to be then moved them back so you don't have to mess with changing any of the settings for it so yeah driving with air blades off 37 minutes left just using what I have in the batteries let's see how we do on oh it, it kind of cut oh all right so that's a problem if the thermoregulator is turned on, let me see if I can get it angled enough for some decent solar power. But if the thermoregulator is turned on, every time I press forward, it uh, cuts power completely to everything. And there I go flipping again. So if you're just driving, solar power is enough. That's all you need. When you're flying, solar power is fine the battery power is fine but if you need the thermoregulator on like i do in this biome because it's so cold here or when you're in the equatorial biomes where it's super hot uh, and you're trying to avoid dying from the uh cold or from the heat you're not going to be flying it very far so that's definitely a bit of a drawback but again you can use the small deuterium generator to help power things. That's kind of, uh, I guess, what it's really meant more for. I guess emergency power production if you need it uh, to hurry up and get out of there because you're ready to get back and you don't want to rely on the batteries to charge up or just for the fact that you need the thermoregulator going at the same time you need to be able to fly. And really, once you get to the areas that you are desperately needing the thermoregulator in order to survive you're probably already going to be making deuterium anyway level dropping. so it shouldn't be a problem i'm probably going to play with a bit more and add a little bit more to it i did increase the cost by adding those six armor blocks to expand the air blaze out by one block to adjust for the balancing issue that it was showing and i did add the item dispenser which is going to add a little bit more cost to it of course if i was to build it in this state but oh you know basic state is really not that bad definitely say you should add at least one if not two armor blocks 
her air blade to extend them out further to counter that balancing weirdness. But once again, this is the Scout to All Biomes by Rethor CZ. If you want to check it out, link in the description below. And of course, that's it for this video. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the design. And hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week. And I'll see you in the next video.